Give me revenge. I want a war. I don't want peace. I don't want friends. I'm in the field. I'm in the streets. I want to win. They are the shots. I'm making them drop. I did it again. So load up the troops and put up the loot. Look, got a whole crew on payroll. Anybody move, get KO. Had that like rooster. Get your block knocked off like a Lego. Fully automatic. Get you really. We can have it. Get on the battle. Just say so. Got a brand new clip full of traces. Put a round on your head like a halo. Woo, woo. Ain't no one guarding me. Umbrella armory. I think you started me up. The throne has been calling, but no one is on it. So I guess it gotta be us. I've been on a mission. I loaded the Ronin. A special edition. I see where they at. And I send them a visit. I'm serving them up like a chef in the kitchen. So hold that. Hold that. Hit the gas like a blowback. No cap. And it's black like Kodak. Put it in your shirt like a throwback. Know that. Wanna play with your life? You can lose your breath. Hit them with the my three or the QRF. And I bite like a dog with a chewed off fence. Put another one down. Who got next? Give me revenge. Shots, I'm making them drop, I did it again So load up the troops and put up the loot And give me revenge Greetings fellow Airsoft nerds, I'm James Urkaber and I'm joined by the one-man army, Sapo of SYG. What's going on everybody, welcome back to Fight Night. We are back at Project N1 here in El Monte, California for the fourth installment of KWA's Fight Night series. All right, before we get this started off, I just want to do a little recap of what happened during Fight Night 3. We saw Valiant representing Biohazard Airsoft taking on Ghost from 1S1K. Valiant coming out on top in that matchup advancing in the bracket. Then we saw Ryan TTG versus Bill representing AARP CQB. Close matchup with uh, Ryan coming out on top there. Then we saw Ranger Rhett also representing Biohazard versus Vince from Captive Airsoft. Um, Vince fell short there. Ranger Rhett was able to capitalize and move on. Then we saw one of my guys, Dom from SYG versus Undead Fred, which is basically straight up domination. Um, you guys saw it. One balls galore, the headshot clinic. Then we saw um, an exciting matchup between Rooster from SYG and Joey from Asylum. Um, really athletic, fast-paced game there, but uh, Rooster just proving that he's just too fast, always one step ahead, and was able to, you know, get the dub. Then we saw Crisis versus Tactical Rose. Um, you know, great matchup there. Uh, I think Crisis just a little bit too much experience in competitive airsoft. He was able to edge out that win, and of course we saw the total domination of uh, Young over Manny from LTD. And um, that moves those winners along further in the bracket, of course. Uh, here we are now tonight at Fight Night 4. The matchups we'll see tonight are Dom versus Ranger Rhett, Gunner versus Valiant, Young versus Crisis, and Rusta versus Ryan TTG. Obviously, we, we, uh, we don't get to see Virus advance. He uh, dropped out of the tournament due to personal reasons, so Good luck to Virus in the future. And here we are tonight at Fight Night 4, and these are the matchups for tonight. So again, you guys are in the quarterfinals. Uh, the two big announcements for Fight Night. Uh, Tom's going to show you one of them. This is the championship belts. Winner is going to get that, but that's not it. Championship winner of Fight Night is going to get 10 grand. In the last installment of the KWA Fight Night series, we announced a $10,000 prize as well as a championship belt will be awarded to the winner of this season's KWA Fight Night series. Sapo, how do you think this is going to change the sort of the preparation and the mindset of these competitors going into it. Do you think anyone's gonna really change anything drastically now that they well, know what's on the line? I think it's like this, you know, you show up to an event the morning of without any knowledge of that, and then you're told that there's 10K on the line. I don't know if it necessarily changes strategy for most people, but mindset definitely changes. You know, like if you've never held 10K cash in your hand before, it's, it's gonna affect you, you know, it's gonna affect your decision making. There's a lot more at stake. Anytime you, you show up to competition and, and they throw a factor in there that you're not prepared for, it's going to change something. Um, and, I, and I think it goes from player to player. Someone like Young, a younger player, he might get really excited about something like that. But, um, you know, a more seasoned guy like Rusta, it's not going to make any difference. A win's a win and a loss is a loss. And uh, an athlete treats that the same way. You know, I don't think we've seen 
this big of a cash prize in airsoft competition before. So, but there's a first for everything, you know, and then we'll see how these, how the contestants react and how they perform under this kind of pressure. OSP is an exciting indoor airsoft arena duel. This is a frantic pace one-on-one -on -one matchup where each competitor starts off empty-handed and must grab a gun stationed nearby. Competitors need to find its respective magazines at designated places on the field. As if that wasn't stressful enough, the magazines located strategically on the field will have unexpected amounts of BBs preloaded in each mag. Each magazine will be color-coded to give the player some idea of the round count of the magazine. The field layout on each side is closely mirrored to ensure not one side has a major advantage. Points are awarded for eliminations and also capturing objectives scattered throughout the field. Each player will have a designated objective color that they must collect to earn additional points. Objectives will be color coded red or blue and each player must collect their own colored objectives only. Each elimination scores 50 points and each objective collected nets that player 10 points for a total of 130 available points per game. With a total of eight objectives available for each player, just five objectives is the point equivalent of eliminating your opponent. Objective points will be scored at the end of the round regardless if that player was eliminated or not. The round ends when a player is eliminated. Round one, OSP, consists of three total games, with each player accumulating points that carry over into round two. A time limit of 90 seconds will start at the opening horn with announcements signaling 45 seconds remaining and 10 seconds remaining. Objectives will reset by KWA staff prior to the start of each round and magazines will be removed from play encouraging a different strategy and approach to the field layout. How are you feeling about this $10,000 prize? You know, it is what it is. I mean, it's not going to change how I play the game. Uh, I mean, I'm playing for fun still, so I'm really hoping that. I mean, if I, if I go to the next one, or the next one, or the next one, I mean, I'll be there, but... <laughs> You're keeping very calm, and I know that Dom typically has this, like, calm demeanor about him. I'm always calm, and it helps me balance out, because if I get too energized, I get, like, anxious and stuff, so there's no need to do all that. I mean, I was nervous when I first started doing the fight night stuff, but now that I've been doing this more and more, like, of, like a competitive, I guess, uh, play style, so I've been more... Calm attitude about you and going into it that way this morning? Yeah, definitely. I'm not going to go into it like, oh my gosh, like my heart's not racing or anything. Because that's when I start messing around. <laughs> Ten thousand dollars doesn't mean anything to me because I was in this to win it anyways, you know? So I'm just here to have fun and play. Uh, so you got your pistol? Yes. Do you think that you're going to have a leg up against Dom in any kind of way? Or is it going to be even I think it's going to be pretty even. I know he primarily uses uh, like handguns or pistols. Um, a rifle is just too big for the, the scenario that we're playing, so I'm really hoping that we can kind of be like toe-to-toe -to -toe with the uh, pistol. Do you think you're going to make quick work of today? I should. I feel like I've done it the past couple rounds, and it's just going to happen again today. Where's the have for Good luck. It's good luck. Uh, try your best, dude, because I hope that you uh, are at your peak, because I want to beat you at your peak. Our tale of tape for tonight's opening matchup between SYG Dom and Ranger Red, both equally matched in terms of experience. So Ranger Red's got a little bit of a height advantage, just gives him the ability to kind of peek over some barriers without having to jump, maybe just like, you know, taking a little peek. Being a taller also makes you a larger target, and unless he knows how to play small, Dom will use that to his advantage. Dom's skills lie in accuracy, playing a very calm game, almost playing somewhat of a slow stalking game, you know, uh, where he plays with his food. You know, both of them with perfect 2-0 records, but one of them will be adding a loss to their record tonight. We got round one with the OSP rounds. Both contestants using the KWA T6 flat dark earth rifle or the EMG salient arms pistol. It's like Dom winning for a quick like, elimination. You know, we saw how Dom, we've seen how Dom's been playing this entire series. You give him the inch, he's gonna take it. So you can't really like make these large movements when him post it up like that, you know. And he's also really good on the other side uh, when he's collecting points. Oof. We're 
and Dom starting to set up early. Notice he's taking that center position and he Touch stays backpack, there. Buddy. So what Red's doing now is, it's weird, it's like I suggested this. He's staying on the outside, keeping Dom busy and collecting those objectives. A few close calls there, you know, I, I think uh, it looked like Dom may have hit Red. Um, but who knows, you know, like that's, that's just from our perspective. Red's doing Dude, a great job of staying so active. Guys, both players are able to accumulate objective points as well as elimination points. Dom using great head movement, um, using his cover really well here. Red's really putting the pressure on Dom. We haven't, I don't think, I, I don't think I've seen an opponent against Dom put this kind of pressure on Dom before, and it's it's showing a yeah. different performance. And it, and that, that might be the answer, you know, because a lot of people, they, they're more uh, reactive to what Dom does as opposed to like, you know, um, causing some, trying to make something happen. Look at that kid. But I also expect too. Dom to be the type of player that can make the adjustments. You probably saw that Rhett is trying to come at him aggressive. Yep. So here we see Dom kind of like playing a little bit slower. Dom's a lot more on the see Rhett kind of changing too. It up too. Rhett's not, I'd like to see Rhett move around a little bit more. I feel like he's staying a, still a little too much, but Dom yeah. is and now Dom starting to play the outside. Dom capitalizing there, you know, knowing that he's not being chased, uh, knowing that, you know, Red is just stationary, so he's accumulating those points. Dom with a very comfortable lead, 40 point lead, uh, 130 to 90. Red's slowing down, he's he's gotta get moving. He cannot yeah. stand still. Sounds a little gas too, a little heavy breathing. A little bit. And little against bit. someone like Dom, who's, a, you know, the, you know, probably one of the best uh, athletes in the game, always in shape, always conditioned. He can't afford to get tired. So Red he might, he may objectives. have, uh, you know, he may have blown his water already there. And Dom is now uh, smelling the blood in the water. One thing I'm noticing that Dom is doing, Red is not, is once Dom engages, he moves. Whereas Red just gets shot at and he stays still and tries to one on one battle it out. He's got to stay mobile in this. Yeah, and that's, you know, I think it's a lot to do with like keeping your head in the game and, and understanding what's going on at any given moment, whether it's points, whether it's positioning, whether it's, um, you know, just, just tactics. Attack and Defend is another intense one-on-one -on -one matchup, with one player assuming the role of an aggressive attacker, with the other player adopting a defensive role. In this mode, only the attacking player will score points for that game. The defending player's only goal is to prevent or stop the attacker from scoring points. Each player will have a chance to attack twice and defend twice. This time around, each competitor will utilize their own weapon of choice. The winner of the OSP round will choose to either attack first or defend first. Each game will have eight possible objectives, each objective 10 points. If the attacker eliminates the defender, they will be awarded any objective points acquired plus 50 points for elimination. The round ends when a player is eliminated. The field will be marked with a visible line separating the attacking side and the defending side. With the defender only allowed to stay within their half of the field, defenders that cross the center line will be penalized and full points for the round will be awarded to the attacker. Match one, Dante attack and defend. One. Yeah. So here we are with the attack and defend rounds. Again, only the attacker can score objective points. Yeah. Wow. Ooh. Another example of uh, Red applying a little bit of pressure to Dom, not giving Dom the time to kind of like, to get settled. I like everything I'm seeing from Red right now. This is exactly how you need to go against Dom. Red's, Red's actually doing a lot better than most of the most of the people that have gone up against Dom recently. And, you know, um, now that we've seen it, you know, people are going to try to capitalize on this. If they study the tapes, they, they try to find what the weakness is. 
Obviously with Dom, it's not his athleticism, it's not his aim. Wow. Oh my. But was, was Dom able to get enough points there, you know, even though he was eliminated in the process? I feel like it might be a tie game at this point. How many times have we seen Dom get eliminated in this tournament series? I can't think of too many. Dom's still in a pretty good lead with 30 points. Uh, 20 points now that Rhett's acquired of the objective. And I think anytime you have Dom on defense though, you have to be very, very careful. Uh, Dom does a good job of posting, uh, keeping track of your position. See, he doesn't really right hide. Now. Smart use of the flashlight there by Rhett. Kind of tucks, tucks Dom in. Rhett loves using that flashlight. Wow, nice gun battle there. Wow. Rhett with the Rhett able to, you know, come out on top again. So we might be seeing, uh, you know, just Rhett trying to execute something different, knowing that, you know, you know, the contestants in the past have, have kind of failed when they kind of go up against Dom slowly. And we know that Dom likes to play with his food, but if you don't give him time to play with his food, you might not get eaten. So, Ooh. And Dom's not happy to get him that to him that round. That was a straight up. Point. So obviously, you know, Dom kind of using uh, Red's own medicine against him, trying to take it to take the fight to him. Dom just shot him. Dom only in a 10 point throat. lead here, though. So it's a very, very close game. So I don't know. What, you know, what could be going through Dom's head right now? You know, he might be a little bit, he might be a little bit razzled. You know, he might think, like, wow, I barely, barely won that one. You know, he won by 10 points. So barely getting by there. At the end, it was because I was down by 10 points, and uh, I knew that once I got that 50 point, that would be it. Stuck to my plan, executed it. He wasn't expecting it, so it worked out. I definitely felt much more confident uh, going into the second uh, half when we had the tackle plan than I was in the beginning. Uh, I'm not really good at just picking up a gun off the ground and then just going with it. So that's a little bit what I had to struggle with at uh, Fight Night Zero. So I caught myself off guard only because I think I got too caught up on the objective. So I wasn't really shooting when I should have been, and I was usually doing more of like uh, like distractions. But I should have been shooting. So yeah. Yeah. So I uh, had mag release on my belt because uh, I got this extended mag release on my gun. So that was like it definitely put like a, a damper on my 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 strategy. Yeah, I was I was hitting those objectives, but I mean I don't know. Something about today is that the objectives just really didn't matter to me today. Like I shouldn't have been too focused on it. Just that last round where he just uh, came at me, I thought he was just sitting behind one of the uh, one of the covers. And he just charged. I was like, oh. he got me on my left side, so I got shot. Do you think you might switch anything up before going up here? Uh, no. I think I just might revert back to my old self, just play how I want to play, and then really stick to it. Well, well, great. We're talking. Thank you. Ain't no Like I told Roy earlier, um, it's cool. It doesn't change anything for me, but it's pretty cool. I, I was coming out here having fun, and now I'm out here coming out to kill people, so. Thank <laughs> you, fine. You seem pretty <laughs> calm. It hasn't really changed anything for you at all? No, not at all. Because like I said, the objective changed. I have to get in the killer mindset, do what I did in the first match against Soto, against Sosa, bring that guy back. Over half the people here, you know, they weren't taking it serious until now. You know, I've been taking it serious this whole time, so. I kind of took Kevin a little too lightly, feeling like my friend. Real nice about it. No one's friends here anymore. How do you think things are gonna go against him? No disrespect, but he's my challenge, so I really I'm just going out there and having fun. I think it's gonna go great. I, I actually think that now with the 10K prize, I think more people are gonna be a little more nervous before. I already know how he plays. Nice. I'm literally already right now. I already got the job. And he might be shaking in his boots a little bit. I don't know about shaking in his boots. 
but uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. He's slow. He's not going to be as agile as I am. There's a lot of mistakes that he, I've seen him make already with that micro. Do you have any strategies? Nope. He's watching. Honestly, sorry that I had to beat you on your birthday, my guy. <laughs> and I'll tell you what I told everybody else. Good luck. You're gonna have to work for it. All right, man. Good luck, bud. Hey, man. You can't be just standing here. <laughs> Arms crossed. You need to like a snack that he is. <laughs> Our tail of the tape for our second bout features 26-year-old Gunner with three years of experience coming in at six foot even with a three and two fight night record versus 34-year-old Valiant who comes in at 5'9 with two years of experience and a two and oh fight night record. Uh, Valiant representing Biohazard versus Gunner, the snake devil himself. Valiant is my underdog to watch for this one. I think if any underdog's gonna get it done, it's gonna be Valiant, and he's already coming out with a 10-point lead. You know, Valiant, uh, one of the more Milson-based players, but he has proven uh, over the last few events that he can play a fast, aggressive play style. And, um, you know, when you're matched up against someone like Gunner, who's purely aggressive, it's gonna be interesting to see how they kinda strategize you know, because Gunner's probably expecting Valiant to play slow when that's actually not what's going to happen. You know, uh, both players using the Kappa Customs, high Kappa pistols. Valiant with the first domination. That's a hit. Nice little one ball there, I think. Nice. Uh, he had the option of using the K uh, new KWA KO Eve rifles as well, but they're both opting for the pistols, obviously, in tight quarters. So they want to stay as compact as possible. If you're Valiant going against Gunner, who's a known pistol guy, do you think he's choosing the pistol to make a statement? I, I honestly think he's, he's just picking the pistol just to to stay a small target, you know, because even though he's used to playing with the rifle, he probably knows, like, you know, based on his past experience playing at N1, that this is a tight quarters CQB environment. So, um, I think it was a smart choice. Valiant gave his position Valiant, with that big hop. A comfortable lead, 70 point lead over Gunner, 80 point lead now. And it's interesting too, you know, um, how how much the uh, 10K, the 10 racks, wow. Yes. Execution style murder right there. You love to see it. Yeah. You know, Gunner obviously not deviating much from his play style, even though there's 10K in the line. Um, it's interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how these players react and how they change their strategies or how their play styles kind of, you know, unintentionally shift because there's this money on the table, you know? Like, to some, money ain't a thing, but to some people, like, uh, 10K can do a lot, you know? Ooh, Valiant takes the uh, Valiant with a Gunner. revenge kill. Very nice. Interesting also that Gunner's now switching up to the rifle in that last round. So here we are transitioning into the uh, attack and defend rounds. Valiant is still in a comfortable lead with an 80-point lead. If I was Gunner, I would just go after those, you know, when, when he's on offense, he should go for those points. Obviously, right now he's on, on defense. Nice I would try you. to stop. Nope. A lot of close calls today. You know, I don't, I don't, I, it looks really close. And unless you're, you know, unless you're there as a ref, like there's no telling what really happened. Good jump nice shot set up. Nice boxing there. What a great combo. So you saw here, uh, you know, he forced forced Valiant to shift the angle and uh, Gunner just one step ahead there and able to eliminate him in the process. Valiant still with a you know, comfortable that, lead. That, yeah. It's almost like at this point, can is he able to come back? You know, he's got to be really focused. Um, still chasing objectives. Yeah, 
at this point, that's what that's all I would be doing if I was going to try to get as many points as possible. You know, don't worry about getting eliminated. Just just play a stealth game, crawl around. Valiant, or correction, Gunner playing this a lot more defensively, a lot more stealthy. I mean, I'd like, points, to see, moving back. I'd like to see him play from an even lower position. Like, to see some crawling, you know, a lot more sneaking, peeking. Ooh. Nice shot. I couldn't, I didn't even see where he shot him out of. See, really nice, tight use of cover. Yep. Quick shadow game away. That's how we Double saw. tap right there. Well played by Gunner. But, again, he should have spent more time getting the points. You yep. know, like, if he had gotten two more, he'd be in a very, very close lead. But now, Valiant on offense, getting some quick points. 50 point lead again. Gunner very mindful of the, uh, the 50 yard line, make sure he doesn't cross it. Well, good news he didn't cross it. Bad news he got shot. <laughs> good use of jump shot. So there's that multitasking there, you know, like he may, he may have had, had his head in the game in one aspect, but what that did is took him out of another aspect of it. Valiant able to capitalize. Gunner's really got to make it happen if he wants to win this. Valiant doesn't he, really he look could, like he cares know, about the objective. He could really go after the points right now. Yep. Gunner is just trying to stay in this. Valiant is just looking like he's head on him. Valiant's starting I'd be to out look of there. After like that home. first shot, I'd be out of there. Trying to go, trying to find a better position. Just got him. See? Yeah. That's all he had to do. Should have gone after the points, you know. I think he got a little bit too aggressive there, got a little bloodthirsty, and it cost him the match. You know, Valiant able to play a smarter game, keep focused, and uh, come out on top with a pretty significant lead. That was my underdog to take it, and he did in fact take it. Good for him. Respectfully, I don't know how a commentator can call my hit from across the field. There was a couple times where I thought that he was behind a specific barrier, um, so I stuck to it instead of checking around. Valiant, dude, he wasn't, he wasn't even a threat. Like, I had an execution kill on him. Um, so he, he snuck away from me a couple times. I definitely got in my own head because I said I was losing to the staff. Like, But aside from those few mistakes, um, I was solid. Refs are calling me out saying it hit my the back of my hood when he was in front of me. I was very happy with my performance. Um, I did what I needed to do and I did well. The guy saying it's hitting my arm when it's hitting the wall. There were just a lot of things. Uh, again, when it comes to Valiant, like I, I had to jump on him. I knew how he was playing, knew how he was moving. It just didn't work in my favor. Are you confident I, how you got those things? I think with the point spread, how it is now, I think I won by 100. Um, so the round that he might have challenged, if that got reversed, I don't think it would have been enough um, for it to reverse the outcome anyway. I think it's going to be enough. Did you care about objectives at all? I, I did. I only grabbed three of them. Because the attack and defend uh, gameplay, I really just had to play strong defense and then on attacking just focus on objectives and then try to get the kill. But speaking of calls from the refs, uh, I hit a pretty sick jump shot. <laughs> I don't think anybody has ever done it with a nine pound AK before. But it is what it is. I mean, I just deal with my loss and go home. Well, once they're closer to $10,000, right? Uh, I'm all right. I'm, I'm working, I'm, I want the belt. <laughs> I ain't worried about the right now. Made me kind of more focused, you know, more serious about this game. But at first, I was taking a little light. Yes, 10K, I will probably try a little bit more now. Just see what I can do. Oh, so you were trying earlier. Yeah, a walk in the park. I'll try, all right. Uh, now that the 10K on the line, it's, it's, it's just different for me. Um, I haven't played with them. I don't think um, so. It's just a little random. I don't think he's really played with me either, so uh, I'm just gonna wait for it to make a mistake. Uh, I've talked to a lot of people that went against her, but I can overdo it right now. Yeah. What would you do with 10K? 
Very responsible. I know, right? Uh, I'll split part of the profits with my parents. It's such an adult answer. Yeah. Invest in airsoft here or? Because they helped me. You know, they came here every single time early in the morning. Celebrate with my family because I bought you a fight. Be avoided from Japan only. I can best with food. That's my money. Housing, property, that's my money. I'm a fun answer. I'll just give you a car. <laughs> Spend it on ammo. <laughs> Is there any words that you have for Chris? Do you have any words for Chris? Good game. That's all I gotta say. Let's get it, Daniel. Bring it on. <laughs> Did your best. I respect that. He's speaking like he already won. Pack your shit up and go home. Get out of here. Hey, sorry. Last question. Last question. I asked you this earlier. How do you think it would feel to be the youngest participant in fight night, taking home that prize? Oh, it's gonna be. It's gonna like feel really great, you know, just show everyone that. No matter how, how young you are, you can still keep up with the, with the veterans of this game and you can take over. Alright, tight. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, Wagyu, he says. That's Wagyu. Awesome. I love it. I know. I love it. Alright, man. <laughs> Good luck. Almost a little bit too awesome if you ask me, but uh, let's get into this tale of tape between Crisis and Young. Um, look, make no mistake and don't get it twisted. Crisis has 11 years of experience playing Airsoft, and in that 11 years, She's played multiple competitive events uh, with Team Slender Airsoft. Got a lot more experience than Daniel. Daniel only playing for four years, but what he lacks in experience, he makes up for in talent, tenacity, and, you know, and aggression. And both of them coming in with perfect records. Crisis with a 3-0 record, Young with a 2-0 records. Unfortunately, one of them has to take an L tonight. In our third match of the night, we got Crisis versus Young. Really looks more like a angry brother sister match. <laughs> He's already uh, eliminated this, two airsoft dads. In this OSP dads. round, they have the option of using the uh, KWA KOE six-inch ice rifle or one of the Kappa Customs high Kappa pistols. Come on, Chris! Don't punish your younger brother. brother. Pistols. I mean, we've seen we've seen Young kind of play Ooh. all different styles here, uh, whether it's aggressive, smart, defensive. So that first round, he chose violence and much uh, opting for the rifle. In Eve six in the second round, the OSP round. Objective and I expect. Pop. I expect to see Young going for a lot more points. And you saw like he was it was just so close that he grabbed the point, boom. You know, like that transition from from the from one mindset to another, from objective mindset to a killing mindset. It was instant it was instantaneous. Great reaction time by uh, by Young there. As soon as he grabs his objective, you'll notice Young set himself up in a good shooting position. Mm-hmm. It's good for work, good for him. Right. Ooh. Ooh. Crisis win. Score one for big sister. Crisis Get it, the, girl. With the aggressive kill there. I mean, don't don't take her lightly. She this. I honestly, I think she has about as much competition experience as Young, and she's you know she's a great competitor as well. So, uh -huh. <laughs> Young with a 50 point lead over Crisis, 140 to 80, going into the second attack and second round for attack and defend. Crisis well, still we Young excel in, in these uh, attack and defend rounds. Really sneaky, um, really objective-minded. Crystal still being very defensive, not really advancing her position, very content to just sort of counterpunch. Young moving around, Young being very active. And the interesting thing about Young's performance is that from event to event, you kind of see a little bit different. You see some different things from him, you know, like he's not exactly playing the same, not always using the same techniques. In this round, you see him do a lot, like a little bit more like a vertical jump shot, like a little hop shot. Um, that does two things. It gives you a little quick peek at what's going on. It also gives you a chance to, you know, take a quick shot should you be lined up with your opponent. Ooh. Get it, girl. Yeah, so obviously, uh, Crisis in a much crisis. better defensive position there. Uh, Young just taking one step, getting cut down, stepping in the Crisis lane. 
Young with a comfortable lead, 170 to 80. Let's see if uh, Crisis can make up his deficit, deficit, grab some quick points. Someone's got to ground this kid. I'm hoping Crystal can get it done. Hit. Mm. Well, when she needs to. When she moves out of cover like that, she's gotta. She's gotta much, be much faster, be much lower. You know, she she kind of made herself too big of a target there. You know, maybe a slide, a dive. You know, just to make herself a smaller target. Young's doing a great job at anticipating and leading his target. That's why he's hitting those shots so well. R really good job of cutting cutting off the field there. You know, getting to the fifty. Cutting that field in half. Just looking for any movement. Polo! <laughs> Using a mag as a distraction there. Almost to his disadvantage. Ooh. <clears throat> See how he does one mag down. Good cat and mouse in this round. Hey, there's his mag he can pick up. It's interesting to see, you know, like how we're gonna get or who is gonna get these younger players to to dig down deep, you know? Like there's like a not too many situations where you see someone like young get tired, you know, but I did hear a little bit of heavy breathing, you know, so I don't know if that was nerves, I don't know if that's the 10k in the line getting to him. So it's it's, it's interesting to see how the new conditions kind of change. Um Change things for these players. Okay, what am I gonna do? <laughs> I don't know, girl. Yeah, little shadows there, you know. Um, Daniel picking up on that. Okay, um, I got 50. Um, wow. Womp, womp. Very surprised to see Young be one step behind there in that exchange. Crystal just kind of like. Gaining more ground and able to kind of wrap Young as he was looking in the wrong direction. So very close game here, 250, uh, 250 to 220. I think Crystal did great. I did not expect her to perform that well at this level. And maybe it's just it's, we haven't seen someone push Crystal to that point. Young could have come into this overconfident, and it gave Crystal a reason and the motivation to to kind of like get super focused and like try to take him out. And she came close. How are you feeling about your performance? Uh, my performance, maybe if I didn't rate it from 10, being like the best, maybe like a five. I felt very lazy. I wish I pushed a little harder those first two rounds of the, um, where you have to find the mag on the field. I was up by, I think 150, so I was like, okay, it's game, and I feel even more lazy, so I don't know why, but. Just, like, through those matches, didn't get like any points. Um, but it, you know, it is what it is. We see you actually start step over the Not really, because <laughs> I knew that I was right next to the line, but I was like, oh, it's game over. I was just cross kicking. So, so it wasn't intentional. It was just by accident, but it didn't work. We saw some stuff flying out. Did catch you at all? Distract you at all? No. The only thing was that I was supposed to be that first. <laughs> 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 but it was all good. Um, I had my, my mindset out just to chase him. Things flying in the air. Because every single Monday I play consistently, practice this perfection. And in my backyard, I have like a go pan set up and I shoot up to the five. So I think that's what I'll be. Do you think the $10,000 changed anything for you in the last moment? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. I hope, I hope Young takes it. Right when, right when this is 10k, I was like, what am I going to do with 10k, you know? <laughs> but like before that, I was like, oh, I'm going to get this, if I had 10k, you know? So, yeah. I just got to focus. <laughs> I know what's mine. Alright.
<laughs> it's that future. Oh, man. <laughs> it's a competition. I think we're all on level ground where I have my advantage. It becomes a disadvantage because of the, uh, the amount of competitions I've been in. I'm bringing that young brrr, man into the fucking game. You already know. So I think my opponent has been in uh, plenty of this style of competition than me. How do you think you're going to go against Ryan? I've done more outdoor competitions or different style team-based ones uh, as well. So I think we're pretty even ground. Does 10K change it? That means the new accessories for Lolo, maybe some 24K gold swinging. A bit. Uh, it will definitely change the way people approach it. Oh, dude, I did the whole walk-up, but I did a little skip. I did it. Uh, puts a lot on the line. It's going to bring up the intensity quite a bit. One piece. Are you nervous at all? We're almost at the championship and there's only one winner. Uh, no nervous than any other event. I'm just going to go play my game and I'm going to do my best and see how far I get. I'm about to do the real thrill in Manila, baby. You know against play style, do you have any specific strategy going into the For me, no. Because I've always kept people in the dark. Like, if you watch me, you watch me. But I'm not going to give you guys any, any details. My best counter and if possible, the same. He's gonna look for anything he gives me. Do you have any words for me? Do you have any words for me? Uh-huh, do you have? about it. I'll see you on the field. This is the Brink Mufia. Our main event for the evening features TTG's Ryan coming in at a whopping six foot one with seven years of experience and a 2-0 fight night record against 29-year-old SYG's Rusta coming in at 5'10 with 15 years of airsoft experience and a 2-0 fight night record. A little ready for some uh, Filipino on Filipino violence here. Yes, loser brings Lumpia. <laughs> Ooh. I, I'm surprised to see Rooster kind of, you know, he's a little bit inactive. Maybe he's just, uh... Hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you think we're going to see entertainer Rooster? Not being Rooster as aggressive as he usually Rooster. is. Which Rooster are we getting today? You know, Ryan kind of breathing hard already. Sorry, table. Rooster, who is, uh... Pretty much a college level athlete. Um, and Ryan. Always in shape, you know? Uh, so you, you gotta come in. You gotta come Jeez. in. <laughs> you gotta come in ready. You gotta come in like focused. You gotta come in in pretty good shape because like you if, you're, if you're able to, if you're not able to focus on the game and you're kind of worried about getting tired very early on, it's gonna be a really short night for you against someone like Rooster. Really dynamic footwork there, but that's kind of what you're talking about, you know? When you're moving backwards, you want to keep your eyes on the field. I see you, Ryan. A little, little bit of too. trash talk. <laughs> a little back trash talk, I like it. Small function, no. Good, good gamesmanship here by both, by both players. Man, Russo with a really comfortable lead here, racking up the points. I knew I was, I knew I was excited for this for a very good reason. The only thing that's a, a little bit of a, get, a giveaway for Rooster is his sneakers, you know? Uh, even though you're moving fast, that sound signature from the, from the sneakers squeaking on the, on the floor, it's a dead giveaway for someone who's a home player at M1. But Rooster, again, one step ahead. I'm not sure, but Ryan looks like he's having some feeding issues there with his gun. Might be. Luck of the draw, though, you know, sometimes you... You, you gotta deal with it, you know? He, what he could do is the gun's not working, he can run back to the OSP section, try to get a different gun. Uh, or just mad dash the objective. Have the option of using an EMG Combat Master Pistol and the EMG Noveski Space Invader Rifle as well. Ooh. Ooh. Ryan with the one ball. Got him. Sounded like a one ball. You go, yeah, Ryan's able to get a nice Ooh. angle. Oh, wow. Step right into it. And that's you know that's how you know that's a, that's a home advantage type situation there, Ryan knowing that lane, Rooster making the mistake. 
And here we are, are going into not attack entertained. and defend around the attack and defend rounds. Rooster with a comfortable lead, 220 to Ryan's 80. And uh, you know, Ryan, uh, Rooster being in, the, in the, the attacker position from the very start is not in uh, Ryan's favor at all. No, because what, what Rooster's planning to do here is just get, rack up as many points as he can. Nice little, nice little juke right there. Fake Ryan right over the top, oh. move left. Ryan, why? Stepping over, stepping over the 50. Overly aggressive there, you know? Uh, and he knew it too, right, when he did it. So. Now we switch up with Ryan as the attacker, so now Ryan can get some points Ryan, back. I go as fast as I could to those points. Not gonna be easy though, with uh, Rooster, with that, with that, uh, with that Euro tactics build. Now Ray Shire lasers. Gun hit. They look goofy. They will outperform almost everyone. Yeah, I mean, because you do have an advantage of being able to actually aim down sights, yep. and it's it's, it's kind of like undisputable, you know. Like um, unless you're really really good and uh, really familiar with your weapon, um, you're always at a disadvantage when your opponent has a gun that they can ADS with. If I was Rhino, I would try to take a deep breath, try to get my, try to get my win back, you know, um, and then just really try to think and focus and see what do I need to do here in order to close that deficit. Both yeah, he's not letting him there, breathe. Man. He's not letting him breathe physically. He's not letting him breathe uh, on the map either. Who's to doing a great job of staying huh? active and keeping Ryan busy? Ryan looking like he wants to go for the kill on this, but in the process. That was like a little bit of chess moves right there, you know? I think um, he, he made Ryan look one direction, switched it up on him, you know? Yep. Totally looking the opposite direction. Ryan had no idea where Smart he was. play there by Rooster. Rooster, again, coming out on top. Um, and, you know, he's one of those players where I don't think this 10K really makes a difference to him at all. No. He's playing to win. That doesn't change a damn thing. Yeah, nothing changed the way Rooster can ever. It, Rooster dictates what and Rooster wants to do. Has anybody scored as high as him yet this entire night? 380 uh, points. I don't believe so. And I believe this might be the largest point deficit. He's there seen, you are, the, baby. The largest gap. Found you too. Well. <laughs> hey. Oh, oh my! Good Love that trash talk. There the you instant, are, baby. Instant gratification too. So you know the trash talk obviously got him. It got in his head. Made him switch the other direction. Boom! Russo was there, just waiting, right for, was, was waiting, was waiting for him. Just cut him down. Two hundred sixty point lead. I don't know how to map that well, but it doesn't look good for Ryan. Yeah, and Russo you know, Russo knows, knows this too. That's why. He's so he's out there, just right. you know, laning, closing out those gaps, not letting, not letting Ryan move out of that home, home base. You know. Even if he had the shot, if you look at the points, Ryan would have to hold off on eliminating Rooster, collect the points, mm -hmm. and then go for an elimination. If he yeah, goes for I mean, elimination he, here, he might be, he might have the focus to do it. I, I just don't know. Like the way he sounds, he sounds a little tired. You know, he's got to know that he's really far behind in points. Sneaky peeking little grab. Four, five, six, five. I mean, Rooster's just looking staff. to choke him out at this point. Yeah, Rooster making a good choice of like uh, Run of the his clock. angles. You know? He's able to see which side Ryan chooses to exit out of. Should he leave that that cover? Oh. <laughs> yeah. So it's almost like what Rooster did is like he created this. Uh, this this shrinking this shrinking map, you know, this yep. invisible shrinking map. Like he kind of just uh, choked him out, you know, gave him very little room to move, you know. And the room that he think he that that the room that Ryan thought he had, he took it and it was actually a trap, you know. So 430 points for Rooster, uh, with Ryan only scoring 110. So 
pretty dominant win there. The, probably the most dominant performance of the night, uh, points-wise. Like I already won the 10K. Like it should be. I know I could have done better. Uh, I think I got in my own head and um, uh, we just took advantage of it. We just put on him. There's no fucking kidding, man. I'm waiting for the championship round. You know, I'm ordering people's love sack seed shoes because they're being messed with the dust. I tried to swing it around in the second round and let small things kind of uh, stack on top of each other. We're too far ahead by points. Come on, you gotta catch up. Looking at it, everything he did, I should have expected more. Did you adapt to anything? Nothing really catches me off guard. I'm just playing with my food. And it was the game I played with most. So he, he, did, he did a great game. He played the way he was going to play. And I didn't counter him. Uh, you're not going to know what I'm going to pull out in the next final round. I'm just showing you guys the same thing that I'm fast. But that's all you know. Fast. What made you hit getting your Was it that 10K? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe that 10K is like a lot of things on the line. Maybe that's really what's making everything like when it's too stressful. You know what Can't tell you. <laughs> oh, go play. Get yourself, get your name out there. Uh, uh, have a good vibe. I know that's one reason they chose me, just the way I am on and off the field. Um, the way the way you interact with other people, the, the energy that you give. That's gonna get you involved, for sure. Hey. In the match between Dom and Rangerette, we finally saw someone that has the ability to put Dom on his heels and kind of give him a taste of his own medicine. Did you think Rangerette was gonna perform as well as he did? And what was your overall take on this match? Um, to be perfectly honest, I didn't think he was going to perform that well. You know, Dom has just been, <laughs> no pun intended, just so dominant throughout this series that, um, to be honest, I kind of wrote Ranger right off, you know, like, uh, but, but to be fair, he came out with the, the, the right game plan. Um, I think he did his homework, you know, I think he, he saw that Dom has always had the advantage in being able to wait for his opponent, play with his food, wait for the blood to, to pick up the scent, you know. But I think Ranger Rhett was able to not give Dom that time to adjust. You know, so he took it to him, took the fight to him. Um, and also, you know, like made it very close for, for someone like Dom, you know. Um, so I was really surprised to see that. And um, this just goes to show that these people are here because they deserve to be here. They earned their spot as the as the finalists, you know, or the semi-finalists. And um, Dom just able to squeak out that win just barely you know so hopefully you know uh he goes back to the drawing board and and sees where his weaknesses are and makes that adjustment because he's gonna fight his teammate next you know uh dom and rusta know each other very well and i'm looking forward to that matchup uh i have a lot of personal interest there and uh maybe even some money on the line there as well so i'm interested to see where that leads i had said earlier that if any underdog has the ability to take home a win it was gonna be valiant uh he i thought he did great i thought he matched gunner very well he definitely did his homework he definitely improved speaking about valiant valiant definitely came into this very prepared very ready to go sabo what are your thoughts on this one look gunner's the homie but like sometimes he comes in a little bit too aggressive a little overconfident and I think um, Valiant was just able to capitalize on that. You know, a lot of the times these matchups are not always about physicality, they're not always about aggressiveness. Sometimes it boils down to the mind games. And I think what may have happened is that Gunner got into his own head, you know, came in a little bit too confident and Valiant just, um, again, you know, just the perfect game plan uh, showing that even though he's Milsom based, he can hang with these speed softers. He can hang with these PQB guys, you know? And um, I think Gunner needs to take, you know, learn a valuable lesson from this season and to, you know, make a really honest assessment about himself. And um, he's got to go back to the drawing board. He's got to go back to the fundamentals. He cannot rely on attitude and aggress aggression. Valiant was just a smarter, a smarter player. I said to you earlier that Valiant in this competition now is the black sheep. 
You know, he's the only guy that doesn't have a speakeasy background. And this is the Game of Thrones now. We got Valiant, Young, Dom, and Rooster. Three out of four of those guys being, you know, speakeasy guys and well seasoned competitors. And uh, if, I, if I'm being really honest, you know, like obviously I want, you know, the guys in my camp to win, but I'm rooting for Valiant here because he's, um, He's the underdog now, you know, to me. And uh, but he's also proven that he's a skillful underdog, and an underdog that's going to be able to take it to these guys. And I and I wish him luck moving forward. So Young was able to defeat Crisis. It wasn't as big of a lead as some thought it was going to be coming into this. Sapa, what are your thoughts on that match? I mean, I've said it over and over throughout the series of the KDW Fight Night. Styles make fights, right? It's, it's true in a lot of areas. And uh, when you see uh, a player who's not intimidated by someone like Young, and you, this actually relates to Dom and Ranger Reds match as well. Um, you know, I think players like Young, players like Dom, they feed off of fear or blood when they when they smell it in the water. But when we saw Crisis take it to Young, and um, it was a really close matchup. So again, styles make fights, and I think Crisis was able to find the right style to use against Young here and almost take him out. But Young, you know, obviously just a little bit ahead, always one step ahead, you know, um, and able to inch out that win. I was really happy to see exactly what Crystal has the capabilities to do uh, from a real challenging competitor. Her first two matches, uh, it wasn't, you could tell that wasn't much of a challenge for her, but for her to go up to someone who is being widely hailed as the next generation of competitors and to perform that well absolutely speaks on the skill set of of crystal coming into this yeah. huge huge coming out party for rooster as far as his performance and his his consistency now we have seen athlete rooster twice now and just come out and really especially in a match against ryan just came out barking and biting and really put the pressure on Ryan and just dominated round after round. What did you think it was going to go down exact, you know, similar to this style? How did you think this was going to happen? Well, I did think that he was going to come out guns blazing and beat him with aggression. I didn't expect that points accumulation from Rooster. And maybe that's the that's the 10k making him think more, you know? Um I don't think it made him play any different um in terms of gunfighting. But I think the 10K got to Rooster in a very positive way, in that it forced Rooster to think, yo, I, I can't just go into this killing and getting those points. I think he was trying to show all the other contestants, like, even if you don't get me with a gun, I'm going to get you by points, you know? And, and I think if I was young, if I was valiant, if I was dumb, that's what I would be worried about right now. Because we're, we're seeing Rooster, the athlete, like you just said, but we're also seeing Rooster with this thinking cap on, and that's very, very dangerous. Thank you everyone for tuning in. Please ensure you subscribe to the KWA YouTube channel and you're following the KWA Instagram for all the latest updates. Please make sure you're checking out the Task Force podcast for all additional bracket information and player interviews. From all of us here at KWA, from my partner in the booth, Sapo. Hey, shout out to all the Fight Night fans out there. Thanks for tapping in. I'm Sapo, rep that SYG. We'll see you guys again next time. I'm Kaber, and this has been the KWA Fight Night 4. And give me revenge. Uh, uh. Give me revenge, uh, yeah, give me revenge, uh, uh, give me revenge, so load up the troops and put up the loot, look.